Terry Wilson. I'm a retired professor and magazine editor who remains active in scholarship, writing, and land conservation. As managing editor of South Dakota Magazine, I had the opportunity to explore many of South Dakota's back roads and small towns. Many rural communities are seeking innovative ways to remain vital, but it is also deniable, undeniable, that rural South Dakota, like the rest of rural America, is at a crossroads, struggling to redefine itself, and in many cases, just to survive. Most resilient in some ways are our tribal communities where tradition remains strong, but they are not immune to the challenges that their non-native counterparts face. I recall a story I wrote 20 years ago about the once thriving town of Ardmore in the far southwest corner of the state. The town had never succeeded in establishing a reliable water well, and when the train no longer stopped to fill the water tank, the town began to wither. When I visited, Ardmore was down to its last two residents, two tough ladies in their 80s. I asked Hermina Curry if she'd like to move to a town with a store and a few more people. Oh, no, 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 she said. I wouldn't move to town for nothing. It's quiet here. I like the open spaces. I take care of myself, but I do wish it would rain. Today, much of the Great Plains and the American West still wait for rain. The Ogallala Aquifer that underlies the, the Great Plains from South Dakota to the Texas Panhandle is being sucked dry, mostly by center pivot irrigations that has transformed arid grasslands to endless fields of corn, a revolution that is clearly not sustainable. But it's not just the scarcity of water that is drying up small towns and rural communities across the Great Plains. Modern agriculture no longer relies on human hands and backs, but is powered by expensive technology and giant machines. The 160 acres granted by the Homestead Act can no longer support a family, at least not with conventional crops. Today, the average South Dakota farm and ranch is almost 10 times that large. Much of the land is rented from absentee owners and trusts and the diversified crops of the past have been replaced by vast fields of monoculture. Shrinking populations can no longer support local grocery and hardware stores, and dollar chains and internet sales fill the shrinking gap. Schools, hospitals, churches, and civic organizations struggle to remain viable as population ages and shrinks. It is undeniable that the way of life our, re our region knew just a few decades ago is fading away. The question is whether the region faces a crossroads or a dead end. Perhaps the question is this, which of our current assumptions and ways of life are sustainable and which are not? It is possible, of course, that widespread availability of broad uh, band internet and remote uh, work opportunities combined with the relatively low cost of living and a growing discontent with urban life might revitalize some small towns by bringing new jobs and new people to the plains. And perhaps life here is renewable in other ways not yet foreseen. But the bottom line, the question that must be addressed is what can the Great Plains, its people, and especially our natural environment sustain. Is it too late to reset the clock or might we yet summon the will and the political wisdom to make the necessary decisions that could save rural America with new and altered ways of life? Will we confront the biggest challenges including climate change and make the radical changes required before time runs out? What crops and what land uses can feed people without depleting irreplaceable resources? Will we learn to live without polluting our resources that are essential to meaningful life either here on the plains or on planet Earth? How can rural communities provide adequate education and health care that re revitalization will require?
And finally, will we save our democracy from those who pervert truth and sow division? And will we direct our collective power to meeting the real needs of the future? My thoughts on the crossroads we face and whether we will choose sustainable paths are probed in my books and in a handful of essays and talks cited here. I look forward to continuing the conversation with fellow South Dakotans. Thank you.